Hi everybody, it's me, <coughs> excuse me, welcome back to the channel if you've been here before, if you're new, thanks for stopping by, I hope you'll stay. This is when I do my roundup of all the books I read in April, I know, it's late. Everything's late again this month because of everything i got to do every day. It's just finding the time to squeeze the film in here. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be having some more for you very, very soon. So, in the month of April, the first book I read was Oi Cat. We do have a physical copy of it, it's just in Jennifer's bedroom. Um, it's a children's book, basically it's a series um, from the Oi Frog. Basically it's a rhyming one um, and Frog has changed the rules to know the cat doesn't sit on a mat, it sits on a gnat. But he wasn't aware you can't sit on something else and they go through all this rhyming of different things. It's really, really, really cute. Jennifer loved it. She's also got Oi Dog, but I haven't read that one yet. Then I got My Summer of Love by Helen Cross. Apparently this is brilliant according to uh, Julie Birchall. <clears throat> I didn't like it. Um, so it's 1984 and Mona is 15 years old. She lives above her house so she drinks, she steals money from the till and plays the fruit machines. Um, then Mona meets Tamsin, um, a sassy girl who claims her sister is dead. She died of anorexia. She didn't. She's lying. Um, basically all sorts of things happen um mona starts posing for nude photos for some pervy bloke that comes in the pub um there's a missing girl in the area and they're wondering who took her who murdered her but they haven't found a body and all that stuff um she gets into this uh relationship with tamsin which is really cool um but it's very one-sided Tamsin is causing all, calling all the shots. It's in, they live in her house and sleep in her house. But Tamsin is the one who is in charge, even though it is told from Mona's point of view. Um, yeah, it, it was okay. I, I, but I only gave it one star. I really... I could have done without that book in my life. I thought it would be really... Be, I thought it would be better. Uh, I then read Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Gomez. I really enjoyed this one. So this is the story of Elizabeth Zott, who is a chemist um, in the 50s. But in the 50s and 60s, um, there weren't very many women scientists around. It's the way it was. Um, so she's forced to resign. She signs on as the host of a cooking show. So basically, she meets a produ producer for a TV channel um, as his daughter's in the same class as her daughter. And basically, he puts her on, on, on thing, hosting a show called Supper at Six where she cooks. But she cooks it scientifically. Um, and the, the women who watch it, they love it. So one woman uh, said she always wanted to be a, a doctor or a vet or something like that. And she actually, no, a, a doctor. And she goes away and becomes a doctor, inspired by Elizabeth. I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars, which I know a lot of people don't like, but I really, really enjoyed this book. The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. I got this book years ago. I think we're talking eight years ago. It's actually got a signed nameplate in it because it was from a Lumacrate. So it came out in 2016, so around that sort of time I would have got it when I was first doing booktube, but... I never read it. It stayed on the TBR until last month when it got pulled from the TBR jar. And I am, um, this is why I won't get rid of any of the books on my TBR jar, on my TBR shelf that have been there for like six, eight years. Because I read this and I really enjoyed it. So this tells the story of Nemesis. She's a diabolic. A diabolic is created and bonded to a particular person to protect them at all costs. She's fast, she's strong, she's gorgeous, but she's not technically human. So she's bonded to this girl and this girl's father is very, very against the regime that's in charge because they're all faith-based and he wants a scientific approach because as their machines are breaking down, they have no way of replacing them, renewing them. Um, and basically, if they don't do something soon, they are going to literally crash and burn. There's going to be no way of coming back. It's going to be apocalyptic. However, he upsets the bloke in charge, the emperor, and he demands that his daughter be sent to him in order as, as a punishment uh, and that she's to stay with him for so long. So instead of sending the daughter, they send Nemesis the Diabolic. They, they dye her hair the right colour. Uh, they make her 
lose her bulk because she's quite bulky because she's got to be fit and make her uh, take etiquette lessons so she can fit in and what's called the chrysanthemum which is, is where this all takes place. Um, Nemesis meets Tyrus, the um, heir to the throne who is allegedly mad and they form an alliance against the emperor. It's so good. I really did enjoy this book. When I bought while I was on holiday, <coughs> um, well, when I was away, was this, The Mysterious Affair, or The Mysterious Case, excuse me, my books are trying to escape, of The Alperton Angels by Janice Hallett. So basically, um, author, true crime author Amanda Bailey <coughs> has been asked to write a book on the notorious case of the Alperton Angels when they attempted to sacrifice a baby they believed to be the Antichrist. All the cultists are dead apart from their leader and the baby. So Amanda tries to turn to track the baby down but a rival author Oliver is also on the trail. But it comes out that it's not all as it seems that it wasn't the Antichrist they believed it was. Um, obviously and that there's more to this than meets the eye this whole case and it's the secrecy surrounded by it goes up to quite high places um, I really enjoyed it I did give it uh, my books are disappearing four stars I love the style of it because the style of it is, is told in messages emails transcriptions of telephone conversations emails text messages and so on it's a different way of writing and I quite like it so it's not in chapter format and I really really in, not, not really in chapter format but I really enjoyed the way that that was written I'm going to keep that one then we have an Andrew Cartmel book. This is not The Vinyl Detective. This is his other series he started last year. He has another one coming out this year. This is called Death in Fine Condition. Our protagonist in this is Cordelia Stanmer. She is the sister of The Vinyl Detective, Stinky Stanmer, so it's the same universe. We do meet Agatha, or Cleanhead, as she's known, and The Vinyl Detective and Nevada are in there as well, though she, this girl doesn't know their names. Tinkler's in there as well. Basically, she collects and sells rare paperbacks, even lowering herself to forgery if necessary. Um, while looking at um, a photograph in a, a woman's house, uh, she sees a collection of what they call sleuth hound books, uh, which are 50s paperbacks, I think it was 50s, 60s paperbacks with all the great artist covers and she wants them for herself so she break, finds this house, breaks into it and steals them all but the owner of the house, the, 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 the books belong to his mother and he is a bit of a local gangster so now she's got to try and uh, stay out of uh, getting killed and um, keep the books and sell the books she wants to sell and keep the ones she wants. Um, so this is book one so it was a bit slow going to start with and I did give it only three stars for this one. It is the first in a new series. It is in the same general universe as The Vinyl Detective but of course he is set setting up the characters and unlike The Vinyl Detective who has no name, he's just known as The Vinyl Detective, we don't know his name. Um, I'm assuming we're supposed to assume his name's Andrew <laughs> and it's Andrew Cartman himself. Um, we know her name is Cordelia, we know she's Stinky Stamner's uh, sister and so on. So I have high hopes for the next one so fingers crossed the next one's better. I'm sure it will be. Oh another one that fell on the floor, Peter May, this time lockdown. This book was released in 2020 but actually written some 15, 10, 15 years before. Um, he sent it to his publisher who said something along the lines of, uh, no, it's, we can't publish that. Nobody, nobody would ever buy that. London, they would never lo lock down London. Never. And this was like 15 years ago, like before, sorry, 15 years before uh, 2020. 2020 comes along and we have the coronavirus lockdowns and his publisher says to him, have you still got that book? Have you still got that manuscript? And he finds it, sends them and they publish it. So basically it's London, um, they're in lockdown, so there, it, it, I mean it's different in the sense that there is martial law, there's violence, civil disorder, um, 
but they are building a temporary hospital and while they're digging the foundations they find a bag containing the bones of a murdered child. They were only placed there the night before. So Jack McNeil is retiring or leaving the force. He's had enough of it. His marriage is over. His son dies from this virus and he is determined to bring justice for this murdered child. So it's really good, it's really eerie reading it, knowing what we know now. Like they said, oh they'll never lock down London, and we know they locked down the whole country. But this was just London at this point. Very good, very good. I gave it four stars. Another four stars was This Lie Will Kill You. I'm just, oh yes, now I remember it, because I read so many as this, I need to read the synopsis to remember it. So this is by a Chelsea Pitcher, and this tells the story of this group of friends who went to a party and somebody died at the party. Uh, nobody has told the truth about what happened that night, so nobody knows exactly what happened and who was responsible for this person's death. The five survivors of that party are invited to an isolated mansion to have um, dinner and compete in a contest to win a $50,000 prize. However, somebody is out for revenge. They want to know the truth of what happened that night. So not everybody is going to leave this alive. It's very good. Another one, like like Five Survive by uh, by Holly Jackson. It was Holly Holly Jackson, yeah. Uh, it's one of those where so many are ten, but not all of them are going to leave. So yeah, I enjoyed this one. I gave it four. Did I give it four? I gave it four stars. Yay! Now the next one was a Kindle book, so I'm just going to find it. It won't be a second. And this was called Awake in the Night by Shauna McKelleny. My friend Charlotte recommended this. She said it was brilliant. She was reading it, so I went and got it. It was on Kindle Unlimited. Uh, basically, this is set in Ireland, and these two, this married couple, these two women, buy a house. Um, I won't do it up. It's going to be their forever home. Uh, only to find out that there's something weird going on. It's t told partly in the present day and partly in the past, because th there are scenes set in 1955, when this was a house belonging to the church, where some of the girls who were kept at the local convent orphanage were sent. Now these were girls who were usually troublemakers, pregnant teens and so on. And they were sent there for experimentation, such as electroshock therapy, um, among others. There's lots of stuff. However, in 1955 something horrific happened and those people are now haunting the house. So these two girls are, are living there, Jess and Nicole. And uh, the ghosts keep appearing to them, they're all about find this, do this, uh, and with help of the next door neighbour, uh, they find out exactly what's going on. There's a bit of a twist. It was really, really good. I gave it four stars. Um, Awake in the Night was on Kindle Unlimited, so if it's still on there, I would advise you go and get it because it was a really creepy book. Really enjoyed that. I'm just have a quick drink. Next, I have Glass Houses by, excuse me, Louise Penny. So this is one of a series um, set in Canada. Um, Chief Superintendent Armand Gamache is, his, is the main character's name. So a mysterious figure appears in the village green in Three Pines, dressed almost like a grim reaper. You can't see the face, they're all, you know. Um, and they're just watching and waiting to see what happens. When the figure disappears, a dead body is found. Gamash faces the consequences of his decisions and actions because there's more to it than just a murder. We've got a drug ring. Um, we've got corrupt police and higher ups. I thought it was very good. Um, I did enjoy it. I gave it, I gave it three stars. Now, the reason I gave it three stars is the drugs ring. <sighs> what are the chances that a drugs ring is gonna run it's stock through the village where the chief superintendent of the region lives. What are the chances? But they do. And, and, and that's why I, I felt a bit unbelievable. It was still very well written. I liked the characters. I would definitely pick up more of Louise Penny if I see any in the charity shops. I'm certainly not going to not read them again or at the library. It, it was good, but it's a bit unbelievable, you know? Do you know what I mean? And that it all happens at the same time as figure appears. Uh, yeah. Then we've got 
Sundays at Tiffany's by James Patterson and Gabrielle Charbonnet. So this tells the story of Jane who is a, a young seven-year-old girl living with her mother who's a, uh, a theatre producer and her father is just off with his new girlfriend. She has an imaginary friend named Michael. Um, he really is an imaginary friend. Nobody can see him but he does actually exist. Every Sunday um, she goes to the St Regis with her mother and she has a tea with Michael and pretend you know they say he's pretending but she's not he's there he's real um, and then she goes to Tiffany's with her mother after to look at the sparkly stuff that, that don't know why it's called Sunday at Tiffany's it should probably really be called Sunday at the St Regis St Regis but that doesn't flow as well I guess because there's not really much at Tiffany's there's more set in the St Regis hotel um, when she's nine years old on her ninth birthday Michael comes to tell him it's time that she's got to, he's got to go and be somebody else's uh, imaginary friend because that's what happens. Um, so he leaves. She is supposed to forget about him. She never does. He never forgets about her. And several years later, over 20 years later, Jane catches a glimpse of him. Can it really be him? Um, yeah, and they, they meet and... Some people say it's a bit creepy because he he was her imaginary friend when she was a child and he's so much older and now she's the age he would be if he was human and they have a relationship. As the story does unfold, he becomes more and more human, more and more real, um, which was, which is interesting the way that they did that. I did quite enjoy that. So there's that one. Next, we have another Kindle book. So I'm going to just go and find the cover for you. So the next one I said I read on Kindle is called A Banshee and a Bookshop and it's by Steve Higgs. It's a Patricia Fisher mystery adventure. Oops, turning around. So this one tells the story of um, this guy who buys a bookshop or buys a shop and sets up a bookshop in it um, that he's always wanted only to find that some nights something happens. When he comes in all the books are on the floor so he has to close the shop while he puts all the books back. He starts staying in the shop from time to time and the nights he stays there nothing happens. So he calls in Patricia Fisher to investigate. While she's doing this she's also um, asked by a friend of hers to investigate this thief called the Banshee. The Banshee goes and steals various things but what he steals most of all is a piece of uh, skin from, the vic from one of the victims in the house. It could be the child, it could be the mother, it could be the father. If it's only one person, it's one person. So Patricia rightly concludes that the, the guy is actually after the skin rather than anything else because he is looking for something specific. So that's what happens with, the, with that one and she, she and the guy from the Tempest Tempest from another series that Steve Higgs has written which I've read about paranormal investigators they come together and they investigate this story all this time Patricia's being chased by a gangster um, boss named the Godmother <laughs> who is trying to kill her so there are some quite some funny moments when that happens as well it was a fun book I did give it four stars because it was just funny it was really funny I enjoyed it um, there were some good moments she found out what was happening in the bookshop though that I'd figured out from the beginning because that was pretty easy but uh, the way she figured out what the band she was and what he was after and why it was really good I got another great title for you now. Great title. Time Travelling with a Hamster. Yes, by Ross Welford. So this is a, a young adult or middle grade, I don't know. Oh. Um, and this is the story of Al Chowdhury. Al Chowdhury's father died when he was eight years old. He is now 12 and on his 12th birthday, his father gives him, his grandfather gives him a letter. In that letter um, from his father, it explains that he knows he's gonna die and can you go back and stop what happens happening? So his father's invented a time machine. Unfortunately, it's in the basement of their old house, so he has to break in to get to it. So the first time he goes back in time and actually makes a change, he actually kills his father right out. So in the story, his father basically has an accident on his go-kart, I want to say, type thing, uh, where he gets a spike lodged... Um, in his face and it a bit breaks off and goes up into his brain and that's what kills him like so many years later. 
So Al goes back and manages to get his father drowned. So when he returns to his time, nobody knows who's he, who he is. Um, his mother is not living with his stepfather because she never married his father, so they never met. And then his grandfather, which was his dad's father, thinks, well, when he sees him, he recognises his son in him because he looks like his dad. And he manages to convince him. And um, then he's got to find a way to get his dad not to use the lean green machine, which is his go-kart, so that he doesn't die either by drowning or water um, um, or by the spike. Um, and it's time time with the hamster because he does take his hamster with him and the hamster gets left back in 1984, basically. But it's okay because years later, Al meets the hamster's grand grand babies. <laughs> it's quite cute. So that was that one. Only two more. Both of them are Kindle books. Let me just... Or e-books. Uh, oh gosh. I can't see. I haven't got my glasses on. Hang on. There we go. So the first one is a death store. Oh dear 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 by Paul Finch. I've got to find it. There it is. This was a short story. It's not going to let me pull up the picture. There it is. Um, this is a short story and um, basically it tells the story of this this woman. She lives in a house on her own in a particular place in London and one night she is murdered. The crime is never solved. Six years later, somebody else has moved into the house, another young professional woman, and she lets the police know that somebody is watching the house. So the police officers, and I don't remember their names. Let me have a look. Uh, Heck Heckenberg um, and his partner Gemma are, uh, have a look into it. Cold case team are is still investigating the death of the previous woman, but they can't find what happened. However, this new lead with this bloke that's been watching her, it, lead, it does lead them to the correct killer in the end, and they do manage to save this other woman. It was really good. It was four stars, even though it was a really short story. Sometimes you just need something short, quick, and easy to read. And the last one I read was the new H.P. Bain, H.P. Bain, I'm just looking for it, which is one of the Braddock and Gray case files. In fact, it's book, let's say, I think it's on like book 16 or 17. Here's the cover, it's quite creepy. And in this one, this one's actually set in Scotland. Now, friend of uh, Sully and Des, um, Paul Dunsmore has bought his old ancestral home in Edinburgh. It was set up, uh, built by his ancestor. It's on Dunsmore Terrace. Um, however, some terrible things happened in that house and it's haunted. Um, so he's having it renovated and two of the builders go into the attic, which is where all the thing is. They go in at night, they break into the property. Well, they've got the keys, so technically they don't break in. Um, and one of them dies immediately and the other one is left a blithering idiot because he's seen something he can't explain. So everybody thinks he's mad. Paul calls in Sully and Des and they travel to Edinburgh to investigate what's going on. Now, as soon as Des get, uh, Sully gets into the house, he can feel that there's something not quite right and there's something evil there. Um, he wants to talk to, to the person who survived. I, I think his name, Angus was his name, um, but at, that, at the moment the doctors won't let him speak to anybody and his wife has been extremely protective. Uh, so they start investigating the history of the house, um, the Dunsmore relative that built it and what they got up to. It's really interesting. Um, and then when Angus does say something, it's find the baby. So it turns out that Paul Dunsmore's ancestor got a girl pregnant and he says yes yes that's fine come and live with me till the baby's born we'll sort it out instead he imprisons her in the attic and in the end kills her and buries her behind a wall and i'm going to tell you anymore because that's pretty much the story but the 
there's lots of twists in there and I always recommend the Braddock and Gray series or H.P. Bain's first series, Sullivan Gray Files and also the Ray Mallory stories which is another one from this world. They are absolutely brilliant. I don't know where she comes up with her ideas. She writes two or three a year and they are all absolutely brilliant. I've got the first of the Sullivan Gray series in paperback as well. They are on Kindle and paperback. They are on Kindle Unlimited. I do want to get them all on paperback at some point. And I gave it five stars because I love the series. It is one of my favourite series ever. So, those are all the books I read in April. I don't know how good a month I'll have in May. I'm hoping it'll be a good month. I'm reading a lot more than I normally do. I'm spending a lot of time at my mum's looking after her. So, uh, at the moment I'm taking my Kindle or a book and I'm reading down there rather than taking colour and stuff because that's a lot bigger. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed this reading wrap up. Uh, I, have, I have another book video coming very, very shortly, which is a good one. I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait to do it. Um, obviously, my colouring supplies haul and, my, and, and books and my completed pages I haven't done yet, but they will be coming very soon in the next couple of days. Uh, so, fingers crossed, and I'll see you all soon. Bye now.